Well, hello, and uh, thank you for joining me online. Uh, this is the Sunday morning message for New Life Ministries for March 27th. And, uh, you know, we've been talking a lot uh, lately about what's going on, on in our country, uh, what's going on around the world for that matter. And, uh, uh, you know, I've titled today's message, Are You Discerning? the signs, the things that are going around us. We're going to take a look at what uh, Jesus had to say about that and uh, hopefully learn a couple of principles that will help us with it. You know, God doesn't want us just looking at this stuff. He, he wants us to be able to tell what he's doing in response to it. And, of course, he'll want us to cooperate with that every chance we get. Uh, so anyway, let's uh, get right into this. Um, um, Matthew 16, uh, verse 1, the Pharisees and Sadducees came and testing him asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. He replied to them, when it's evening, you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. In the morning, there will be a storm today for the sky is red and threatening. Do you know how to discern the appearance of the sky, but cannot discern the signs of the times? An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and a sign will not be given it except the sign of Jonah. And he left them and went away. So Jesus tells us we need to be able to discern the times that we're in. I uh, read an interesting article. It said discernment is more than just being able to tell right from wrong. It's the ability to tell right from wrong almost right. I like to add to that the ability to tell truth from half a truth. A lot of lying, a lot of deception going on all around us. God wants us to be able to work through it, hear what he's saying, and then cooperate with what he's doing in response to what's going on around us. Uh, so anyway, we're going to have a look at this today. And I first want to talk, you know, we talked last week on, on, on the things that are going on in our world. Uh, you can go back, that, uh, that message is there on YouTube if you want to review. I want to list the, the, the things that I said are going on around us because they are the signs of the times we're in. So just a reminder, the church and our nation have been dishonoring God for decades, and it's really coming to a head right now. And dishonoring God, it's not just the big ugly stuff, robbing banks and killing people. Dishonoring God is any time we justify disobeying his word, any time we, we reject the basic fundamental principles of our Christianity and conclude that we don't have to obey them for whatever reason. Promotion of communism, sexual perversion, abortion, loss of our basic freedoms. That's going on around us. These are the signs of the times that we're in. Our culture and our government are contrary to our religious beliefs and our freedom. That's not kind of ha that's happening. God wants us aware of it. There's a satanic plot to shut down or shut up the mouth of the church in our nation, in, 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 in our communities. That's what's happening. So let's see what we can learn about looking at those signs, discerning them, hearing from God what we're supposed to do with it. Anyway, uh, the approach that I'm gonna take here today, uh, not different if you've been around me. So Jesus said we should discern the times. And then it says he walked away. But if we stay in that chapter, Matthew 16, there are three more principles that he reveals to us. Three more things that he makes a comment about in the same chapter. And God knew, though they weren't all spoken at once on the same day, when we read about discerning the times, God wanted us to pick up these three principles and apply it to that. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, Matthew 16 and verse 6. Jesus said to them, take heed. Beware the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. If you remember the story, if not, go read it. Matthew 16. Uh, they'd gone across the lake. They had forgot to bring food. And in that discussion, Jesus said, be careful of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. 
Verse 12 tells us they understood he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread. He wasn't talking to them about their lunch, but he said, beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, that teaching, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. That means if you accept a little bit of a wrong doctrine, even a tiny bit, it could affect some very big things in your life. I referred us back to that list I showed you just a minute ago. Let's look at it again with the understanding of the leaven of the Pharisees. The church and our nation have been dishonoring God. Gradually, uh, 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 for the church, more and more gradually disobeying and rejecting some fundamental principles. If you buy into that in the least tiniest bit, it's going to have a big effect on your beliefs and your walk with God. Right on down the list, promotion of communism, sexual perversion, and so on. You buy into that in the tiniest way. You give in and say it's okay, or you ignore it in the littlest, smallest way. It's going to affect you in very big ways down the road. So I want you to see with response to the signs that are being revealed around us, you don't buy into them. You, you purpose very seriously to hear what God is saying and then do it. You don't, you don't tolerate a little bit of sin or ungodliness in your life anywhere. All right. Uh, going on in that same chapter, people were saying to, to Jesus, well, who are you? And, and, and Jesus was saying, who do you think I am? He says to Peter, who do you think I, who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. I also say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. The gates of hell will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth as, which shall have been bound in heaven, whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. Here's what I want you to see about three principles here. Who is Christ, the Son of God? He, re, he says the gates of hell will not prevail against the church that he builds on the revelation of who he is, but he warns us the gates of hell, that's the strongest part of hell, will be trying to come against us. Then he says, I've given you the keys. Here's how I want you to be aware of those of that teaching in response to the signs that are going on around us. We need to be solid in who is Christ. We need to understand Satan is going to battle the revelation of Christ, but we have the keys to do something about it. Everything that's going on in our country today, everything I showed you on that list, it boils down to one thing. Do we have to follow Jesus Christ as Lord? And if we call ourselves his followers, do we have to follow the teachings uh, according to the Bible? We have keys to the kingdom. That's revelation knowledge from God's word to battle the enemy so he doesn't overpower the church. We have these principles and we use them very scripturally and by the leading of the Holy Spirit to handle the season that we are in now. This is what we do with the, with the signs that are around us. Finally, at least in these principles, um, um, well, let me just read you what he said first. Still in that same chapter, Jesus said to his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Whoever will save his life shall lose it. Whoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. What is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels. He shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom. Here's what I want you to see. This is the third principle with respect to reading the signs that are around us. And he said, I said it this way on your note, the signs tell us it's time to go to work for kingdom, for the kingdom of God. And I want to attack a very uh, false doctrine that exists in the church. And I've done it many times. I'm just going to take a minute with it now because it's here 
with a word to be understood in response to reading the signs that are around us. He warns us and reminds us that on judgment day, we're going to be rewarded for our works. We're not saved by our good works. That's not the way to obtain righteousness. But the Bible says we're created to do good works. When we read the signs of what's happening around us, we go to work for the kingdom. That's what he's saying here. It's time to go to work for the kingdom. The world out there needs saved. Our friends, even our brothers and sisters in church, need to be instructed about what's going on and need to be helped to stay on track with God for the crazy times we're in. You read the signs, if you discern them, you go to work for the kingdom. All right, here's my summary. I said this last week, I want to reapply it to today's teaching. What do we do with the signs that are obviously uh, taking place around us? Know that we, we, <laughs> if if you were in church with me right now, I'd say, look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about us. So I'm saying to you, my friends online, be sure you know God is talking about you right here. We are the remnant. We are the people that God is depending on to accomplish his will in this earth. And it's time now more than ever to be aware of that and to say yes to the Holy Spirit. Last week, we took a look at the book of Esther, and we did that to honor the holiday Purim, which is a celebration of God delivering his people from a complete government plot to kill every Jew in Persia. I related it to today by saying we have a satanic plot to shut the mouth of the church, to stop the, the people of God from influencing our nation or our communities here in America. I said last week, let's, let's honor what God says we need to be doing right now because of Purim and because it's on his calendar. But I want to update it this week. Because we see what's going on in the world around us, because we see what's going on in our country, in our government, in our education system, with respect to, to, to the economy and having jobs or not, we see what's going on in the world around us, in the world and in our backyard, and because of that, it's time to make a prayer effort like we have never made it before. Seems like every time I talk to you, I'm saying God is organizing a prayer effort. You know, I have a good friend who's a, who's a, of a younger generation than me. Now, we don't want to assign a label, a worldly label to anybody's a, a generation. I'll tell you the generation I have for you if you're under 50 years old. I'm calling you the Jacob generation. That's a God term from his Bible. You know what Jacob's all about? I don't want to play religion. Tell me how to connect with God. I don't want to play church. Show me how to have an encounter with the living God. That's the Jacob generation. So here's a word for the Jacob generation. Oh, my buddy tells me my generation doesn't like to be told we just need to pray. Well, if all the understanding you have about prayer is we got to ask, we got to ask, we got to ask for God's help. But I've been telling you for years, prayer is not just asking. It's asking and then listening for the instruction he gives you about what to do to be part of his solution for what you're asking from him. Did you get that? So I'm going to keep telling you every time we get together, we got to pray, we got to pray, we got to pray. But if we're reading the signs on the wall, if we're reading the signs of what's going in on, our, on in our country today, we better say, God, I'm praying for you to save America, but I'm showing, I'm asking you to show me what I can do to help. And we pray and we stay with it till we get an answer. Discerning the signs around us, we understand what they are. We know what God is saying and we follow the Holy Spirit in, re in response to what we see as the signs around us. Here's the word before we pray. Matthew 24, another word on dealing with what's going on around us. False Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. The elect, that's us, followers of Jesus. If we're not careful, we can be deceived. If we read the signs, 
We seek God for guidance. He shows us what to do. He'll show us how to stay safe in spite of the insanity all around us. He'll show us how to keep our, our families safe. How'd you like God to show you how to keep your kids out of the devil's hands for what we're going through? That's the kind of stuff we ask him. And right on down the line, we're going to ask God for guidance. We're going to receive that. We're going to obey that. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I appreciate they come online to get a word from God. Well, I give them your word right off the pages of your Bible, and I sow that seed in the good ground of every heart. I'm believing the fruit of it will be a relationship with God that says, Lord, what do you want me to do? And receives the instruction and the anointing of God, and we begin to do it. And in that, Lord, you'll use what's going on around us. You'll use the signs to keep us close to you, to keep us protected, to keep us safe from the enemy and in the will of God. I declare that over us in Jesus' name. Well, thank you again for uh, joining me here online, and uh, we'll see you soon.